Hello and welcome. So over the past few years, I have recommended books to my husband to read. He loves listening to books. And so I've definitely recommended books to him to listen to that he has started and then said, I am not going to be able to read this one. I'm not going to finish this one. And so what I thought I would do is share with you the books that I've recommended to him that he has loved. He's tried to rank them within categories, and so I'm going to share them. Just keep in mind, I haven't read all of them, so I do recommend books to him that I have not yet read, but that I think he will enjoy. So the first category that I'm going to share books in is historical fiction. And the first book that he ranked that he has listened to is Boys in the Boat. It really is such an intense book. This is one that I have listened to. So Boys in the Boat is a historical fiction novel by Daniel James Brown. This is the story of the 1936 Olympic rowing team. They started at the University of Washington. And while we do have a main protagonist, we really do get a storyline of multiple, the multiple people that were on that rowing team and their experiences with the depression and growing up in poverty and why they made the decisions that they made and how they ended up in this this boat on this rowing team. It also connects in Hitler's regime and what the Nazis were doing as this was these two storylines were eventually going to converge when these young men ended up in Germany for the 1936 Olympics. You can easily Google what the outcome was of that experience, but the way the book describes the lives of these boys and uh, the situation in Germany, it just really culminates at the end with such an intense denouement. And um, not only did he think that this was the best historical fiction that he's read, I would wholeheartedly agree. It is definitely one of the top historical fictions I've ever listened to. Next, he rated Dead Wake by Eric Larson. This is the story of the crossing of the Lusitania, which was in World War I. I also listened to this as well. If you have not read a historical fiction by Eric Larson, I highly recommend it. He is a very thorough researcher and his books do really get down into the details, but he is able to humanize a story unlike any other historical fiction writer that I have read. One of the things that I loved about this book was that it gave the perspective of both the German side as well as the English side as well as the Americans and the passengers that were on the Lusitania. And again, you can research how that event unfolded and what people now think kind of really was going on. You can find out the um, impact on lives that the crossing of the Lusitania had. But Eric Larson does such a thorough job. You can see in the back of this book, it is just full of footnotes. The next book in the historical fiction ranking is Endurance. Shackleton's Incredible Journey by Alfred Lansing. This book was written, I think, in the 1950s. This book details Shackleton's journey to try to cross the Antarctic continent. And as I was talking to my husband about it today, I was like, well, was he at least successful in his venture? Because I haven't read this book. He said, no, it was a mess. But they did all survive. But the way that they survived was really miraculous um, and incredible. I will say, from my understanding, Shackleton did exhibit really strong leadership skills in the fact that he put himself in peril and did not just put his men in these dangerous situations. He really was part of the rescue effort to go back and save his men who were, he had to leave part of them behind while he went to try to get help. But it, it really was a mess. There was a lot that went wrong. And um, he was not, I don't think, the first to do what he was trying to do. But they did all survive. And so my husband enjoyed this as an audiobook as well. So the next category is sci-fi fantasy. My husband is currently in the middle of this. He's pretty well obsessed. 
He is listening to it on Libby, but he does have a beautiful special edition that was a gift from you can guess who. And so he's reading Red Rising by Pierce Brown. He is about to start the second one, which is The Golden Sun. This copy is signed. It is a beautiful set. This is actually the first three books that came in this set. And this series has continued on. There's a lot more. I think it goes to be multi-generational. So this is the story of Darrow. It is a multi-cast social system. And he is a red, which means he works down underground mining, I think. His whole society of reds have been told a certain story about why it is that they are where they are. I think they're on Mars. I think that's why they're red. Why they're in the cast they're in, why they have to mine with this idea that if they do it long enough, they will be able to come up out of the ground and live on the ground instead of under the ground. Uh, and shortly here in the beginning, he discovers that this is all a lie. Everything that he has ever believed, that his society has ever believed, this working class, is a complete lie. And he basically goes about to topple the political system. There's a lot of treason and intrigue and assassins and there is an exploration of like bionic physical changes my husband is just enthralled with this series. He really is enjoying it and I couldn't be happier. So next in the sci-fi category, my husband really enjoyed The Martian by Andy Weir. The premise of The Martian, uh, and I have not read the book. I did watch the movie though, so I think it means generally the same, which is that there is a exploratory discovery mission from Earth in a spaceship and they go to Mars. They're there revisiting what the astronauts before them have set up as far as structures to make sure everything is still in place. And there's a huge dust storm that comes. And so the crew gets back on the ship and they quickly depart, but they forgot one of their crew members. Um, I think his name is Watley. He gets left behind. And so fortunately, as I mentioned, there are some structures that they have built on the surface of Mars, but he's got to really figure out quickly how he's going to survive. He doesn't, you know, they obviously didn't bring enough food for someone to live there or water or the, the shelter. There had been a dust storm. So I think the shelter um, sustains damage in that storm. He's got to figure out if he's going to be able to communicate back with Earth so that someone there knows he's still on the surface of Mars and alive. So the premise of this story is incredible. I will say, I remember when I asked my husband years ago when he was reading it, what he thought, and he said, the story was really great, but there was a lot of cursing. I don't remember it being that way in the movie, so there's that. But otherwise, The Martian is his second favorite sci-fi fantasy book. The next book on his list is The Stand by Stephen King. I read a lot of Stephen King when I was younger. I realized that he had a pretty long commute to work and, and I think to school that he had hours that uh, this would be a good audiobook to try. I think it's something like 40 or 50 hours in length in, in Audible. This is a story, it's sort of like an apocalyptic tale of what happens when most of the population on Earth is destroyed by a plague. It's about the people who are left. It's also what makes it sci-fi fantasy is that there are characters in here that are not human, for lack of a better way to describe it. They are really trying very hard to bring evil into onto Earth and have it spread. It is a tale of survival. It's a tale of hope, but it is also a terrifying tale of what Stephen King envisioned could happen on Earth in an event like this. And it is, in my mind, quintessential Stephen King, and my husband really enjoyed it. So the next three, he said, were basically even in his rating and score. So I wanted to share, uh, continuing in the Andy Weir theme, my husband read Project Hail Mary. He said The Martian was a lot better, but he also enjoyed this one. And so I did not read this one. My take on it is, is 
It reminds me of Gravity by Sandra Bullock and George Clooney, but I have not read it, and so I might be totally off base. Um, but my understanding is there is a teacher turned astronaut who wakes up while hurtling through space, which sounds terrifying, and he's not completely sure who he is, why he is where he is, and what he's supposed to be doing. And through a sequence of flashbacks, it starts to be revealed to both the reader and to him on his mission. And his mission, I think, is to save Earth, and he's got to figure out a way to, to do that. The next book that my husband, again, said was pretty even with all three of these is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. The thing that got me in that I thought would my husband would enjoy is their supposedly 1980s Easter egg video game references in it. And I thought, oh, he might enjoy that. The premise of this story, it really reminds me of like an adult nerdier version of Mr. Limoncello's library. There's a system that is built. I think it's related to video games. But the person who designed it put in a, a scavenger hunt, basically, with like a treasure map inside of the system. All over the world, there are gamers who are like tech whizzes who are trying to decipher and decode the scavenger hunt to figure out what this developer has hidden inside of this system. People are obsessed with it. It's like they don't eat, they don't sleep, they don't work, they just do that. Well, our main character somehow, I think he's really young, like high school level, he discovers a way in and uh, he becomes very well known for it. I think he does try to keep his identity hidden, but everybody knows him, I think, by a code name. And uh, now everybody's, the frenzy has been renewed to try to uncover what has been hidden in this system. So my husband read this years ago and really loved it. We've also watched the movie. He's actually read more Dan Brown books than just this. This is the story of Robert Langdon. Uh, he connects up with a cryptologist who's a female and they are trying to uncover clues that are supposedly hidden in the famous Mona Lisa painting. It gets very intense. They are chased all over Europe, I think Italy and Paris. And there is this secret group that is also after what the meanings actually show. Robert Langdon really feels like it's necessary that he gets to it first because he doesn't have nefarious purposes for whatever these clues are, are showing. Whereas this super secret group is. Religion plays a pretty strong role in his books. They're just very intense and so if you have not picked up Dan Brown's series with Angel and Demons, The Lost Symbol, and The Inferno, which is the latest one, then um, I would recommend trying them out. Last, I've asked my husband to figure out what his favorite family read aloud book is and we've listened to a lot. We've listened to the entire Laura Ingalls Wilder series. We've read a lot of books as a family. We just turn on an audio book, uh, oftentimes during supper, and listen to like a chapter a night. And it's something that we all that we all really enjoy doing. And he, of course, chose the Harry Potter series as his favorite. He did not read this growing up and so this is his first time reading through it and we are currently up to five and things are starting to get darker and more intense we are listening to it based on my kids's age and so as they get older we'll continue into book six and then obviously book seven um, but we're just really taking our time we started the first one years ago but it is just a great series and of course we love these illustrated versions even though we are listening to it we open this up and kind of flip through it after we've listened to it to just kind of see the the images uh, and we have a rule that you can't go past where we've listened to on um, the audiobook so nobody's skipping ahead
So I hope you have gotten some ideas for someone in your life who maybe has a little bit more traditional masculine tastes in books. And if you have any suggestions, please feel free to leave them below. I would love to know what you're reading and what you would suggest to, again, a more masculine reader in your life. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.